Good day and welcome to the channel. In this short video, we're going to explain how to take an old piece of crap like this, which is a, in this case, it's a Dell Inspiron 15R, which is, the particular model is an Inspiron 5537, and with $15 and about 30 minutes worth of work, we're going to take this thing from unusable garbage, because it's ancient, to like new, and you'll be amazed. I'm going to run some benchmarks on it the way it is, uh, but I'm not going to waste your time, uh, you know, having you run them. I'm just going to show you the results. Uh, in this case, what do you need? Well, you need uh, $15. And in this case, we're talking about a uh, 250 or 240 gig, something like that, solid state drive. Now, I bought this for uh, about $20 Canadian off Amazon. They're all over the place. Uh, you could buy a, a one that's half this size for about $10 US. It's about $15 US for this one. So yeah, I figured I'd be the big spender and go all the way to 15. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the drive out, we're going to replace it, and you can do this too. It is not hard, which is why I'm doing it at a kitchen table rather than in my shop. And then we're gonna reload Windows 10 from scratch, and if you'd like, you can even upgrade it maybe to Windows 11, depending on what type of, of, of equipment you've got. One of the important things uh, to mention is that while we're working on a laptop, this thing, uh, you don't have to be. If you've got an old PC, same process works. Uh, so, uh, what tools might you need? Well, you'll probably need a screwdriver or two. And yeah, we have the proper tools. We're not using proper tools because we're assuming you don't have them. We just have some regular Phillips screwdrivers. Uh, if you have some compressed air, great. If you don't, no problem. We'll show you how to get around it. And you need a USB stick uh, to make a copy of Windows 10, which we'll explain how to do for free Completely legitimate. Okay, let's get to it. So the first thing we want to do, pull the back off. In your case, if you have a PC, you want to pull the side off. So let's try with the, in this case, a larger Phillips screwdriver. Oh, he's missing a screw there. That's nice. And yep, I can do it with this larger one in, in this case. I'm going to use the smaller one because it's it fits a little better. Now in this case, because it's a laptop, it's got an external battery that I can get to. Sometimes the batteries are inside, this one is not. A couple of things to note, on a lot of laptops, there's a washer on the back of the screws, so they don't actually come out, they just come, they just get loose. Uh, in this case though, it looks like they actually come out. If something, if a panel won't come off, just use a uh, credit card to pry it along. You won't damage it. There we go. Two little things to note. One, uh, if you don't have an anti-static mat, uh, which I do, just not here. Just use an old tea towel or something. Save scratching up your table or your laptop. Also, when you're pulling out the screws, put them down in an order in which they came out. Now with most laptops, you take the screws out, the bottom just falls off, you grab your compressed air, and you blow out the fan. Or if you don't have a compressed air, just blow on it and uh, use your finger to wipe it off. Now, in this case, this is a very odd laptop in that the top actually comes off and that's a much more complex process. So unless you can easily get to the fan, don't bother. So you know what I'm gonna do with this one? I'm not gonna bother. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I'll use the compressed air to blow through the uh, vents backwards. Uh, so I'll blow it out on the sides uh, and I'll do that outside so that, you know, cause a bunch of fluff is probably gonna come out and I don't want it in the house. Okay, now in my case, I have ready access to the hard drive. So I see I've got a couple of screws left. In this case, there's a little tab, which is nice. Pull it out. In this case, I've got a nice one terabyte drive. I'll, I can put it into an external chassis, uh, but not really worth it because you can buy a one terabyte USB stick for about $10, so not worth the effort. This has a little mounting bracket on it. I don't need it, but I'm gonna take it off anyway and put it on the new one. This also gets to a good point. You can see this mounting bracket's a little larger than uh, the, uh, what the new disc supports. It's not a problem. You can see the gap there. I don't care. It's solid state. I can drop it. It doesn't make any difference if it moves a lot. I mean, you don't want to smash it around, but you can. After you're done putting the screws in, go back around, give them a little crank. You want to torque them down, but don't strip them. Okay. Now what we have to do, is go get a copy of Windows 10. Very easy to do. Google Windows 10 Media Creation Tool, select the download option, install it, and it'll ask you whether you want to put it to a USB stick or an ISO. You want to select USB stick. 
and it will very quickly make a free Windows 10 USB stick for you, which then you can plug in the side of the machine and we can go into the BIOS and tell it to boot off of this. And then you might ask, well, what about the license? Well, you'll see, we'll get to it. Okay, so now I've got my USB stick plugged in. What you need to do is get into the boot order. Now on a Dell, that's F12. You just press the F12 key over and over again and it will bring up the boot order. So I can set it to say, instead of, hey, boot off that hard drive we just put in, which is empty, boot off the USB stick. They're, they're all a bit different. So it's F2, it's F10, it's F12, it's escape, it's sometimes delete. It depends on your computer. So let's power this one up and I'm just gonna press F12 over and over again. You can see here I've got boot options and there we go. Now I want to boot off of, let's say I didn't see it though. What you do is you go into setup and you would enable booting off the USB stick. In this case, it's right here. So I'm just gonna go back up to uh, EFI uh, USB one. Let's see what happens. Now this is probably gonna bring up a bunch of garbage at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, see this? Don't worry about that. That's uh, normal and just let it sit. There we go. As soon as you see that, that's Windows. We know Windows isn't on the hard drive because it's a brand new hard drive with nothing on it. That's definitely booting off the stick. This is a touch screen, so I'm just going to do that. Uh, install now. I don't have a product key. That's what you would say here. And we'll explain how this works and just, actually we'll explain it now. So there's two options. One, all of the big brands like Dell and HP, the license key is embedded in the firmware of this computer. So you have to know what this shipped with. Now I know this is a home computer, so it came with Windows 10 Home, so that's what I'm going to install. If you had a machine from an office, you might select Windows 10 Pro. And after we have this installed, uh, on the after the first reboot, it will automatically activate. If, however, you don't have a machine that has the license key built in, no problem. Go grab yourself an old copy of Windows 7, like this one, uh, because the Windows 7 license keys still work on Windows 10. Here we want to do custom. If you had partitions on here, you would select each one of them and select delete, but we don't, so, because it's brand new, so we're just going to move on. Something to note is, before it restarts, pull a USB stick out in case you have it set to boot off there, because it's going to boot again. You don't want it to boot off of here. So it's like you brought it from the store. So, I'm in Canada, so I'm going to cleverly select Canada. And it is important to select your correct region to get the store and other things to work. So don't get your region wrong. Wherever you are, mark it correctly. Okay, US keyboard, sure. I don't need an additional keyboard. And you might ask why it wants to connect to the network right away. Two reasons. One, uh, it's it uh, wants to grab some updates to see if there's anything new since this USB stick was made. And secondly, it really wants you to use a Microsoft account. If you don't want to use a Microsoft account, what you do is uh, on that screen, just say I don't have connection. Oh, and the third reason it wants to go to the web is to grab drivers for anything it's missing. Now, because these are older machines, almost all the drivers were built into the Windows 10, but maybe not in your case. So in this case, I'm going to just call it user one. You can call it whatever you want. And now you're going to get asked a pile of questions. And the reason you're getting asked these questions on these separate screens is to meet GDPR, which is the General Data Protection Regulation in Europe. Uh, that law came in, oh, 2015 or so, and requires each question to be answered uh, on a separate and clear screen with separate and clear answers. Okay, this is just for help. Uh, you know, if you want help, I don't. I'm going to click skip. So done? Well, not quite. A couple of things. Uh, something I should have been clear of. If you're using a Windows 7 license key, you do not enter it back on that screen. You enter it uh, after your first reboot here. So that's one thing to know. Second thing, uh, what we need to do is let it finish grabbing all the drivers and all of the updates it can get. And we're going to encourage it to do that by going out to, in this case, Dell, and also getting Dell drivers in addition to just Microsoft drivers. You can see here, the video driver just got updated. That's why the screen flashed. If you want to see what's going on, right click on your start button and select device manager. These yellow triangles with a black exclamation mark are called a bang. And what it means is they don't have drivers for them yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go out to Microsoft and we're going to see what it's got. Update. And uh, we'll check Windows 11 after to see if this machine is capable of it. Let's go for a check for updates. 
and I also want to go into the advanced options. There's a bunch of things I want to set here. First, I want to set the get updates for everything Microsoft has. And the next thing is in delivery optimization, you want to allow, definitely make sure that it's allowed to download updates from other machines. So the way this works is your computer can grab updates that are already download, downloaded on other computers on the same network, which saves a lot of bandwidth and a lot of time. Uh, let's go back here and let's go back and see what the updates are. Yeah, look, a whole bunch of them. So we'll let it run. Now there's usually, there's often, uh, here it is right here, view optional updates. That you wanna click, click on that. And this is where drivers are. So I want to expand the drivers. Oh, look at them all, yeah. So you wanna select all of them. By the way, yes, it usually locks up here. So you click something and now it's just not doing anything. This is completely normal. Don't know why, I just call it a bug. If you, I've seen it sit here for as long as, oh, a minute or two, actually even longer than that. Uh, let's click download and install. And we can also, yeah, look, now it's gonna download all kinds of stuff. And let's bring up device manager at the same time. So I just clicked activation and it's act this one's even activated, we gain with the digital license, even without the first reboot. That's a change from previous things. Okay, so let's restart this and we'll explain a couple things as we go. So one of the things to, uh, that uh, we did was put in a solid state drive, right? And you think, okay, but what solid state drive? Well, look, if it's an older computer, all you have to look for is SATA, S-A-T-A. Yes, there are performance differences between the different brands and different products, just buy the cheapest one you can. Now this, in fairness, was about $3 more than the cheapest one I could find, but I like the Patriot brand. And by the way, this is completely unsponsored. Amazon, Patriot, Dell, nobody's paid me anything for this. Whatever you've got, just buy the cheapest one you can that fits the size you want. Size being the capacity. In this case, this is 256 gig. Now off to your manufacturer. In my case, it's Dell. And see if they have any updates. That is the machine, Inspiron 15R5537. And let's see what it thinks we need for updates. And it tells us right here that Windows 11 is not supported on this device. And the reason for that is most likely to do with the TPM, the Trusted Platform Module, which is just a little chip that sits on the motherboard and allows everything to be encrypted. Windows 11 requires encryption, Windows 10 does not. That's the primary difference between the two. So the benchmarking tool that we like to use is called userbenchmark.com, all one word. So you can see here, it now says that it's a yacht, as far as boats go, that this has been moved up. Take a look at the screen here, and we'll see what it was before, all the way up to uh, 50, uh, well, 46%. Uh, it's still not great for gaming, never was, and still not great as a workstation. But you can see here that this machine is actually doing pretty well. It is not the piece of garbage that it was before. And I can tell you just from using it, the responsiveness is night and day. It is just amazing. So would I say that this was worth the upgrade? Yeah, this was worth $20 Canadian, about 15 US. Uh, it saved this old laptop. Uh, but again, this doesn't have to be a laptop. If you just put a solid state drive into your old PC and you wipe it out and put a nice new fresh Windows 10 on it, it's going to sing. Hey, if you found this video useful, please give us the big thumbs up. We'd really appreciate it. Subscribe's also appreciated. We do a lot of this kind of thing. And you can always get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. Or you can leave a question or a comment below. And if we don't get back to you, somebody else will because it's YouTube and everybody has an opinion.